My name is William Smith. I go by Talking Moose in a lot of forums, uh, especially Mac Admin Slack or on Jamf Nation. And I am a partner program manager here at Jamf. So what the heck do I do? Uh, what I'm showing you is what I do. Uh, I work with our partners, the people who might go ahead and deliver the new onboardings for Jamf Connect or Jamf Pro, something like that. And I help train them, bring them up, so that they can deliver on behalf of Jamf. But internally, the same work that I'm doing, training our partners, uh, we provide this training to internal people as well. So if we bring on a new uh, person in services, that's my group, then we have all these materials to help get them ramped up and prepared. One of the jobs that I do, which is really kind of cool, is I get to work with a group called SMEs, subject matter experts, and put together documentation about new features. And uh, what I'm going to be showing you is documentation that I put together, uh, in particular for internal people and partners, but there's nothing confidential in it where I can't show it to anybody else. So that's what I'm getting ready to do. Uh, I'm gonna talk to you about app installers. Uh, fair warning, you're going to see me reading because this was actually something I did for a video, but all I did was I just brought up the keynote. I've got my script ready, uh, 10 minutes, and I'll have you knowing everything about app installers if you bear with me. All right, so let's go. Um, it was at uh, 2021's Jamf Nation User Conference that Jamf announced app installers, and it's supposed to be a streamlined way to install and update Mac applications, third-party Mac applications. So App Installers handles the sourcing, the deploying, and the maintaining of non-Mac App Store apps. And so these are going to include popular titles like Adobe products, Citrix Workspace, and browsers like Chrome and Firefox. The, the list of apps is curated by Jamf based on our app catalog of more than 700 titles. and I want to point out that doesn't necessarily mean, though, that we'll always be able to take all 700 titles and put that into app installers. Uh, and I'll explain why in a little bit. So as part of the service, Jamf will vet the packages before adding them to app installers to verify that there's no issues with the installers themselves. We're not going to vet the applications themselves after they're installed. There's no way we could do that but we will at least make sure that uh, through some automated processes, we get that app, uh, we get the package that we download or whatever we do installed and it works, the application does at least open. Some apps don't come from vendors though, as an Apple installer package. Uh, they may, for example, be delivered as a drag and drop app in a disk image, or they may come as non-standard installers like TeamViewer, which is a dot app installer. In those cases, Jamf will repackage them as standard Apple installer packages so that we can make them deployable. And when that happens, Jamf will then sign the new package using its own certificate. It won't be the original developer anymore. I see we've got some questions coming up, so I wanna make sure. So tell you what, I'm gonna save questions for the end because uh, this could actually Maybe I, I might be hitting some of these ahead of time. So bear with me and we'll do all questions at the end. All right, well, let's see here. Uh, the initial preview for app installers uh, is releasing with 10.37 and it's starting with just 65 app titles, but there will be more added over time as Champ builds out the service. And the service can be used for both installing new software as well as automatically keeping software up to date when new versions are curated. So now let's discuss what uh, is required to use app installers. It's pretty simple. App installers will be available only to Jamf Cloud customers. And I know some people are gonna have a question about that in a minute. Uh, customers hosting their own on-premises Jam Pro servers won't be able to use the service after it comes out of preview, and it'll be part of the Jamf Cloud hosting service itself, which means there's not going to be an additional cost to Jamf Cloud customers. 
it does require enabling the cloud services connection in Jamf Pro, which enables other features like the icon service, uh, integrations with Jamf Connect, uh, Jamf Protect, and Title Editor. Uh, customers more than likely have this connection enabled already. Here's a few things you should know about app installers. First, it's, it's using the install enterprise application MDM command to install packages. It's not using a Jamf Pro policy. That means that feedback in Jamf Pro is going to be limited to what the command can do for us. The command doesn't necessarily report success or failure when it installs a package. Instead, it'll report that the Mac has received the command to install the package. It's also not an update inventory command. While using the preview, you might want to go ahead and set your update inventory policy, the frequency of it, uh, to every day instead of weekly. Jamf will continue to improve app installers to make reporting and inventory easier, again, as they prepare to move from preview to production. Now, with regard to software licensing, Jamf will abide by each vendor's license, uh, where licensing will allow. Jamf will redistribute the software and will add it to the app installer's catalog. In other cases, though, Jamf's legal team may need to work with an individual vendor to acquire permission to redistribute. That means it could take longer for an app to be added to the catalog. And in some cases, software may be uh, behind a login, which is going to make it impossible to redistribute that software. So here's some more things worth knowing. App installers won't manage the licensing that may need to be associated with the software. So for example, it can deploy Microsoft Office products, but end users will still need to activate their licenses or administrators will still need to deploy a volume license separately. Now, how soon should app installers deploy a package once it's enabled? It'll check every 15 minutes for new devices that fall into the target group and then queue the installs. So expect there will be a delay after turning on the app. Now, if a Mac falls out of the target group, previously installed apps will stay on the Mac. App installers won't handle app removals. Now, it's very similar to uh, Mac App Store apps, if you look at it that way. And right now, while in preview, App Installers doesn't yet support self-service, and it doesn't have very robust logging. Again, Jamf's going to continue to improve App Installers as they prepare to move the service out of preview. So consider preview to mean there's more to come. Let's look now at how to prepare app installers and use it. This is what you would do in your environment. First, we need to ensure the cloud services connection is enabled in Jamf Pro. All right, what's the cloud services connection? It's that link between customers' Jamf Pro servers and the supporting cloud services that Jamf offers. So again, it enables the icon service for storing app icons outside the database and preventing bloat. Uh, it enables the Jamf Connect and Jamf Protect integrations for deploying those products to endpoints. And it enables the title editor for use with patch management. If you're using any of those services, then Cloud Services Connection is already enabled. But let's see how to do it. In Jamf Pro, go to Settings, and you'll scroll down to the Global Management section to the Cloud Services Connection icon. You'll enter the credentials of a Jamf account tied to the organization, their Jamf Cloud account, and then you'll just click save. That's all there is to it. If it's already connected, this is what you're going to see, and there's nothing else to do. Everything's ready. All we need to do is add apps to our target Max. Here, you'll click computers and you'll go to Mac apps. This used to be called the Mac App Store apps. But now it's not just for App Store apps. This is where you'll also access the App Installer's catalog. You'll click the new button to add an app. And then you'll choose the Jamf app catalog and click next. And this is what you couldn't see, Chris, or some of you who were experimenting. 
But here's where you'll see the list of curated apps from GEMF. We currently have just 65 titles. So what I wanna do is go to the second page and we'll scroll down to find Mozilla Firefox and we'll click add. What you see next is not a license agreement. These are just JAMP's terms and conditions where you need to acknowledge that you have a valid license with the software vendor to use the software, not with us. And you're simply taking advantage of JAMP's app installer service to deliver the software to your Macs. All right, you'll check the box. It says, I understand and agree to these terms and conditions and then click continue. Then you'll choose a target group that should either install the software or receive software updates. The target group is a smart computer group. It currently doesn't support static computer groups. And be aware that right now, you can only choose one target group. For additional information about the installer, you can click the View App Installer button. There's not much to see here right now, but uh, if there's anything of additional detail of importance, we have a place to actually show that to you in the future. All that's left to do is to turn on the app installer and click save. The new title is then going to appear in the list of Mac apps, and it reports that it's from the JAMP app catalog, not the Mac app store. All right, now what? Remember, Jamf Pro will review and queue app installs about every 15 minutes. So I can't really demo the app popping up on a computer. I wish I could. Uh, and currently, we're not collecting any feedback from the MDM install command. And we really don't have a way that uh, we can wait for the software to appear. All we, all we have to do is wait for the software to appear on the Mac. That's about it. But what can we do to, do to actually track that the app installers is working? Well, since we're using the install enterprise application command to install the package, we can view the computer's management history and we can verify whether the command is completed. If it's not completed, we'll actually find the install enterprise application command under the management tab instead, and it'll just report as pending. So look for that. And then on the Mac side, uh, this is from Dr. Dr. Emily. Uh, she is our IT person, our Jamf Pro person here at Jamf now, and she has this on her Mod Titan blog. So, I think everybody is swiping this command from her blog. Uh, we can run this command to, on the Mac uh, to view the MDM command activity from the unified logging system. Uh, this command is uh, is documented again on on her blog, Mod Titan. I think it's Mod Titan. I can't remember, just look for Dr. Emily. And note that the last argument, the very end of this command, limits this activity to just within the past hour. All right, so if we run the command on a clean Mac that's never had this command sent to it, it's not going to return any information. It's gonna look like this. But once the install enterprise application command has run, then we're going to see its details like, here, Mozilla Firefox has been installed. Finally, let's look back at the screen from earlier because it states the most important thing that I can tell customers should understand about the app installers today. This is a preview to let customers get a glimpse of what Jamf is doing. It's not finished yet. There's still more to come. So set it up, play with it. We'd love to hear your feedback and suggestions. Uh, I will add to the end of that. That's the end of my script, basically. But I do want to say, uh, never assume that when Jamf released as a feature, and this is a very good example, that it's finished. Many of our new features, especially if they are big features, are going to actually roll out over multiple versions of Jamf Pro. So don't ever think that, my gosh, how can they be so stupid? Forget that. We probably haven't forgotten it. It's probably in the next beta. If you go sign up for the betas in your Jamf account, or we're looking at rolling it out in a release after that. 